kids. Welcome to Uncle Joe's Cartoon Playhouse, home of the very best cartoons your eyeballs ever sucked on. Oh, jeez. All right, anyway, today we've got a great new episode of Becoming Georgie, uh, an awesome new episode of Big Ass America, and a new episode of Dr. Pin that starts out great and, and ends up awesome. Oh, boy, it's going to be swell. Well, speaking of swelling, you probably noticed Uncle Joe is in unbearable agony. But don't worry, it's just a little boo-boo. My friend Spider accidentally stabbed me in the stomach. He has a bit of an anger management problem when he catches you stealing the battery out of his car, but that's okay. Uncle Joe's had stab wounds before. Not this deep, or passing through so many vital organs, or with part of the blade broken off and still stuck in there like that, but still, I'm used to it. <laughs> oh, oh I, I guess Uncle Joe won't be doing a lot of laughing today, kids. Or, or standing up or moving around, or, or probably staying conscious. But we can still have big, big fun. What should we do, huh? <coughs> Okie pokey dance party. Uh, maybe later, okay, kids? How about something else? <coughs> No, God, how about something where we can all sit quietly? Oh, come on, you just made that up. Go to hell. And while you're going to hell, why don't you check out this episode of Becoming Georgie? Now, this is by far the funniest show about George W. Bush and Saddam Hussein living together as college roommates ever made. Huh? Here we go. Oh. Oh. There's a weapon of mass disgusting. Woo! Mm. Woo, that done did it. <laughs> For God's sake, close your windows! A minute. Did I close the window for I left or didn't I? Gotta recollect. Oh heck, if God wanted me to remember, he'd have given me a sign. Please don't kill me, I have family. Bang, bang, pop, pop, now you're sleepy. One eye open, that's just creepy. I love musicals! Hey, Saddam, I went down to the public library like you suggestalized, and I got one of them there books, or as I call them, word cozies. Way to go, champ. What? Saddam cannot give nicknames too? Can't you see I'm reading here? Man, these spaces between the words really help. Oh, looky, pictures. Woo, natives, too dumb to wear clothes. Georgie! useful and close the window. It's windy in here. That's why they call them windows. I just got that. Oh, sure thing, Mr. Georgie. Oh, uh, oh, oh, oh. Ooh, horsies. Georgie Bush, close the window or I am leaving. Ah, uh, you're too late. I nailed the door shut while you were in the crapper. Oh, you nailed the door shut, yet you refuse to close window? By Mohammed's grapes! Why you do these things? Why you do? I blame the coke. <laughs> Fine, I'll close the dang window if you're gonna be a crybaby about it, Mr. Crybaby. You're a baby that cries. I guess it's not really exceptional, seeing as most babies do cry, but you're different, because you got a mustache. Babies don't have mustaches, except maybe in Italy. Are you happy now? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, don't worry. Brownie will clean up this mess. <laughs> oh, hi, kids. Uncle Joe's a little sleepy. 
They're kind of sleepy you don't wake up from. Maybe you can help me stay awake by doing some crafts. Won't that be fun? Today on Craft Corner, we're gonna learn how to stitch up your own gaping knife wound. Now here's what you'll need. A needle, some thread, and some wet rags to keep the wound clean. Fresh rags are best, but all I have handy are these ones covered in grease from spider's carp. So I guess the first thing you gotta do is thread the needle, huh? So, mm-hmm. Ow! Ow! Owie! Damn it! Damn it. That did it. Uh, Uncle Joe is gonna walk into the light now. Oh, shit. Before I go, I want you kids to know that I hate you all. Especially the fat kid with a hat. You know why. I'm going. What the hell? Son of a bitch! I friggin' died! I can't die sober! Wake up, you jackass! No, I can't be dead. It's not fair. I have so much to live for in my life. Like, uh, well, there's, uh, well, there's gotta be something. I mean, I was, I was gonna put Spider's battery in my car, and then, uh, well, I had to clean my toilet. That's it? Oh. Oh. My whole life's been a waste. Aside from trying to educate and entertain young people, who gives a rat's ass about that? Look, uh, kids, I'm sorry for saying I hated you all before I died. Especially you, fat ass. Uncle Joe's gonna have a bit of a, an afterlife crisis right now. You probably don't need to see it. But you do need to see this hysterical episode of Big Ass America. If you thought that last cartoon was funny, wait till you see this one. And if you didn't, well, Bite me. Now, here it is. Ah! Gary! That's 18 for you and zip for me, virtual Trixie. You want to go again? Oh! Gary, my kitchen all splattered. You need paint. Later, Tosh. I gotta show... Paint now. High-tech whore, later. Oh! Hola, planet. No overpopulato in Americano. And seniors drive muy ridiculoso automobilos. Comunicado later. Back off! Or I'll call intergalactic immigration on all of you. I will perform demeaning tasks and not gossip about your embarrassing personal habits. Yeah, I don't think so, Robo Servant. I'll take that green guy, though. I'll give you five bucks an hour. If you're lucky. <laughs> oh, you gotta admit, Tosh. Miguel did one heck of a job. Is nice. Now get him out of here. I hungry and want the kitchen back. Not so fast. Maybe you could do some other scut work around here. Oh, see, si, senor. You watch. I work good. Gracias. You are muy generoso and classito, senor. Call me, um... Gareito. <laughs> Hola, Miguel to Mi Planet. Mucho work opportunitos and garages to call home. Americanos are muy cheapo, but muy, muy stupido. You come now. I 
thought we were done with green immigrants, Gary. But Tosh, Miguel's familio just got here, and they're gonna do all the things I don't do for you for five bucks a day. Good deal, huh? Oh, yes. <laughs> I'd be a dumbass if I let you light this, Miguel. I'm allergic to smoke. Way worse than flowers or paint or... But this cigarillo is imported, Garito, from Venus. That means Venetian strippers smoke them. <laughs> Think about it. Give me that! Gary, <laughs> you must get rid of aliens! They're driving me up my own walls! But, hon, why spoil their fun? They really seem to enjoy backbreaking work for chump change. T -t Tell you what, why don't you go out and buy yourself something pretty? Hey, where'd my wad of G notes go? I bet they take it. <laughs> Maybe you're right, Gary. Tasha hate cleaning, but nothing like more than the cooking! <laughs> Let's see how good you wash Moscow Ponchiki pot. Not even Russia's top scientist has found a way to clean buckwheat kasha with liver cooking schmutz. A little green cleaning man! Oh, time to clean, little green cleaning man! Oh no! Ay caramba, no es posible! Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I know, mi familia, so sticky, so ugly. Even Doleros is disgusto. Ah. But it's okay to sometimes say it's too disgusto. Let's go home. I tell Gary. Huh? What the? F uh, where did you get this? I told you he took it. Oh, see, but only after Garrito used to blow his nose. I want to keep it, but mi familia already muy grossauto. Ciao! Stupido Americanos. And how many thousands of dollars you treat like tissue, eh? Turn Tasha on when you react like Big Shot American. You know this. Oh, hey, kids. Apparently, now that Uncle Joe's dead, the laws of physics don't apply to him anymore. Only problem is... Damn, change keeps falling out of my pockets. Now, why do I still have change anyway? What, did those pennies die too? Ugh. Anyway, uh, sorry for being in such a bad mood. It's just kind of a tough pill to swallow when you die and then figure out how much your life sucked. You know, if I could just have one more chance, I'd really make something of myself. I'd get back on my feet and... Hey, see that? Move your feet! Oh, sweet Jesus! My body's still working! Probably because of all that crank I took for lunch. Oh, there's still hope yet, kids! Move your arm! <laughs> oh boy, I have an idea, kids. Yeah, now whatever you do, don't try this on yourself. You can do it to a friend if you want, or surprise your parents while they're sleeping, but not on yourself. You listen to your Uncle Joe. Even if he's dead. Ah. Grab the jumper cables. Gold? Warmer! Ah. Now clamp them to yourself. No, not there, you idiot! Up on your chest! Put them on a nipple or something. That's it. Oh, oh this may take a minute, kids. So while we're waiting, uh, how about we watch uh, an amazing episode of Dr. Pin? Now, Dr. Pin, there's a guy who certainly reanimated a corpse or two in his day, huh? Here we go! Bill, hate mail. Bill, death threat. Letter bomb from Neighborhood Watch. <gasps> but what is this? An invitation to a soiree? Scary cool. Who's it from? My beloved ex-league of evil. Dear Dr. Pin, congratulations on your release from prison. We're hosting a bash in your honor. 
P.S. We will teleport you to the party. But I need to shower and share! Where are we, Uncle Dr. Pin? My old evil stomping grounds. Oh, my. Look what Victor has done to it. Victor? He took over the league after I left. The egomaniac actually carved his face in the mountain. Uh, will your parole man lady be happy you're here? We were teleported to a nefarious fortress, Bobby. How is she to know? That no good needle nose is up to something. Oh, Dr. Pin, Victor is anxious to meet you. Well, we wouldn't want to keep Victor waiting, would we? Dr. Pin, welcome! So, how do you like the new hideout? Your menacing mug in the mountain is magnificent. Introduce me to your nephew. Yes, yes, of course. This is Bobby. Bobby Victor Von Skull. Ah! This is Mr. Geiger. He's radioactive. And Gearlock. He's a killer cyborg. And, of course, you've met Professor Cranium. Cool to meet you, supervillains. Guess who? Marilyn. Your beauty never ceases to enchant me. Wait, are you balder? It behooves you big time, Finny. <coughs> oh, Bobby, meet Marilyn Moreau. She specializes in splitting genes with devious results. Oh, don't be so formal. Your uncle and I used to date. So, you were quite the tentacle man back in the day. Cranium, maybe little Bobby would like to see the Hall of Super Weapons so us big grown-up type people can be alone. You have super weapons? Oh. Pim, are you hiding? I won't hurt you. Until I get my hands around your neck. So... Penny, how you been? Devise any good world dominating schemes in the slammer? Me? Oh, yeah. oh, indeed. I haven't changed a bit. <laughs> Same old madman. <laughs> <Gah. laughs> good, good, good. Yeah, glad to hear it. Look, I want you to be my new right hand villain. <laughs> What is this? A knife gun. It shoots knives. You probably shouldn't play with it. Ah! Oh, oh, man! Oh, I am so sorry, Miss Moreau! Oh, don't worry about it, Penny's nephew. Along with brilliance and great gams, I've got starfish DNA. Geiger, do away with it before it mutates and there's two Marilyns slithering around here like last year's Christmas party. I'm still waiting for your answer, Dr. Pin. I am done waiting for your answer. Geiger, vaporize him next! Wait! The truth is, I have changed. I work and take care of Bobby. He's been here five minutes and already cut Marilyn's arm off. If I were you, I'd teleport us home immediately. You misunderstand, Dr. Pin. This is not a request. <laughs> Major parole violation, mister. Excuse me, who are you? Why do I even care? Eviscerator! <sighs> Don't move, Pen. <sighs> hey, lady! If you ever want to work as a henchman, call me. Move it, Pen. Bobby, hurry up! Hatchet's hurting me! I mean, I mean, no, she isn't, Marilyn. <laughs> We're just having a grand old time. How is he, Bobby? Does he miss me? I know I broke his little green heart. He's dealing. <laughs> ah, ow. Hey, hi, kids. Guess what? My plan worked. I'm alive again. Isn't that great? I have second-degree burns over most of my body, and, well, one of my nipples has been clamped right off, but I'm alive! And, just like I promised, I'm finally doing something with my life, starting with teaching Spider a lesson for stabbing me. Oh, boy. 
Right about now, he's probably haunting that shack he lived in behind the bus station, wishing he had another chance to do something with his life. But he's not going to get one, because I have his car battery. <laughs> well, now that that's done, what should I do with my life? Well, come to think of it, taking care of spiders is pretty much all I wanted to do. If I can get my toilet cleaned, I guess I can die happy. So, what did we learn today? Well, we learned you can actually die from having an 8-inch piece of rusty serrated metal jammed into your abdomen. By experiencing and documenting life after death, we discovered the incontrovertible proof of the existence of God and the soul that mankind has been searching for since the beginning of rational thought. But most importantly, we learned to screw God and the soul by reanimating dead people with a car battery. See you next time on Uncle Joe's Cartoon Playhouse.